So we'll go we'll go uh, Naheen Himes here. And when we were going through the mock it up before you fuck it up rookie draft, uh, Casey really broke down some some uh, some good angles on Naheen Himes and how he could help you this year as a rookie running back. Um, I really wasn't drinking the Kool Aid. Um, but it hasn't taken very long at all for that i mean week one he had seven catches so it's really not been hard to figure out at that point maybe marlon mack wasn't hurt yet but there's i got no excuses certainly i don't think he finished the game i I got no excuses that uh i i was not going to be in this position to brag about my take on naheen hines in case he is so you take the floor first with mr hines well i mean Basically, I don't know if, if you missed it and the mock it up before you fuck it up or you're maybe newer to the program. It's something we do every year. Um, that's kind of right after the NFL draft. We do a lot of scouting before that draft, and then we kind of use one of our home leagues and break it into uh, more of a usable tool than just saying like oh we're doing a mock draft and there isn't a team already formed right. on this said draft so like you're not necessarily drafting for need you're basically just ranking yes. those players at that point and, and it's, uh, you know you're kind of doing that through this through our mock it up before you fuck it up because it gets to a point where you're just you know you're ranking the guy you're taking the best available for the most part sure maybe, maybe there's a top end receiver that you're swapping out for one of the lower end running backs or whatever um, but we got into the second round, and Naheen Hines, somebody really needed an RB2, and I, I thought that this was... Not far into the second round. No. It might have been like 2-3 two, 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 or 2-2, two, 2-3, two, 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 three, two, two, four. Think, Yeah, 2-2 two, two or 2-3. Two, um, and he just didn't have any running backs, really. And he had one, I think he had Melvin Gordon. Okay. And I'm very impressed that you remember that. Um, I was just stating that you know with this draft pick is naheen hines the best pick and this was before like obviously by the end of summer naheen hines was being drafted he was hot much higher than when we were kind of talking about him yeah he was hot um but i just thought and kind of saw what what i thought was going to happen here and i mean yeah he he scored good points in these last two weeks but a seven five and a nine three isn't the best and the 12 in in week one um you know, wasn't anything to brag about. So who knows really what's going to happen again? We're gambling, but um, I just, with this Frank Reich offense and what he was doing and the way that the Eagles played it last year, I saw a lot of upside opportunity for a guy like Naheen Hines, who is a converted receiver and can play that slot position. They didn't have a lot of receivers to start with, and they've been losing them like crazy. Kane's already out. TY is now missing some time. Sure. They're missing Jack Doyle. Who's, you know, a, Say what you want, but pass catcher. He can catch. And, I mean, they really haven't had any other running backs. Not that Naheem Hines is crushing it in the attempt category. This was the most attempts he's had all season this last game with 15. But before that, it was 4-5, 4-5. Yeah. Um, So I just thought that the upside with this guy was huge from a pass catching perspective. And, you know, I knew Andrew Luck was hurt. And I knew this kind of was going to be sort of a shorter passing game offense. Keep get the ball out of his hands. But I knew this was kind of... At least what you saw as the offensive coordinator as the Eagles with this uh, committee approach and quick passes, and Naheen Hines fit into that profile well, and he can play in, in and out of the slot. So I thought this was you know, a, a really solid pick if you needed an RB2 near the top end of a draft, and he could really help you out. And he's been helping you out. You sure. know, obviously, the 7 and the 9 isn't great, but it's not the end of the world. And that, you know, who knows what will happen when Mac comes back. Uh, is, is kind of my concern, and he's just had a good game, and a lot of people are really high in, on Naheen Hines, and much like we talked about uh, James White being hot right now and people you know, really latching on to seeing all these last two games, he's had 28 and 16 points, like, and he was kind of a buzzword near the end of the season. It's all starting to kind of come together, and maybe I would consider selling Naheen Hines if if – I could make an upgrade. I'm not, again, we've talked about this multiple times. There's no point in making a trade that is anywhere near lateral uh, yeah. for you. But Naheen Hines, like, you might have paid a high-end second for him. Maybe you even paid a first for him. So it might not even be worth for getting your first-round pick back if you paid the first for him already. Well, um, there was. Sorry. But who knows? I, I, no, it's all good. I. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in selling a little bit i think kane could come back i think hilton stays in there i think there's a glaring need for receivers on this team and they kind of see it now like it's this guy's first frank wright's first go around at being a head coach 
They have two tight ends that are good. Ebron's been nothing but great this year, so yeah. I can't take anything away from him, and Doyle hasn't been out there. So, And Matt could come back, and they could easily draft a bell cow after seeing how this kind of it's what It was all great when you were on Philadelphia, and everything's going well, and you got a bunch of backs who can mix in there and do all sorts of things. It's a completely different story when, A, you don't have an offensive line like you did because you, you do have – you made an effort – at yeah. least this year. You drafted a guard really high and you've made an effort over the past years to get better. You've had some bad luck with injuries. Um, and you don't have Philly's defense either. Right. You don't have Philly's defense either. And so I could see maybe Naheen Hines just possibly staying in a sort of James White purgatory of being that kind of there'll be some up games and there'll be some down games. You might need him to fill in as your RB two. This is my oh shit emergency RB two. And maybe not hanging on to the va- He's a very good receiver. Um, yeah. Well, he's not a great running back and that was never my interest for him. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so I'm, I'm, I don't exactly know what you could get for Naheen Hines right now. And I, I don't think anybody would necessarily even really give you a first, but like we talked about James White, I think you might be able to possibly pair him up with something and make a make a jump up in player caliber for a player who might be maybe a little safer than this guy week in, week out. I like Hines a good bit, but it's eat Mac. We haven't even seen him really with Mac in the fold staying in there for a whole game. And I think Mac's somebody who's can catch the ball and is an electric player. And there, you know, there's been rumors of a Le'Veon Bell type that He's on Le'Veon Bell was on the short list of the, the Colts were on the short list of Le'Veon Bell right. type suitors. And I don't know if there's any fire to that, but yeah, you know, I think it doesn't take much for it to really, it doesn't take much to change anybody's outlook, but he's not safe is I guess okay. in his out in his outlook for longevity. He's not necessarily safe. A lot, a lot could easily happen to turn the tide. Whereas maybe some other guys who are a little bit more established, it takes more to get them out, out the door and decrease their roles. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm super, I, I could tell when we were talking about the things we were going to talk about tonight, earlier in the week, um, I could tell we were going to be a little bit different on this. And that's why I was excited because you were early in on the Heen Hines and you really nailed this potential pro Well, you, you basically crystal balled some things like you sometimes do, and this has worked out exactly up to completely home run about what might happen has happened and it's, he's been awesome. Um, so I guess a couple of that you, you you know a couple of different ways to look at it. Obviously, you haven't seen Marlon Mack. He saw him for a couple of plays in the preseason. He definitely looked explosive on the edge. He caught a pass and looked really hot. Mm-hmm. So Marlon Marlon Mack, he's he's got some fire in his legs for sure. And if if that hamstring or quad or whatever he hurt gets gets right, he could be a threat. Um, but I. For me right now, like in through five games, the Colts offense, like it, it is a quick release system. It is a, you know, quick pass offense anyway. And then I think in addition to that, Andrew Luck and his shoulder injury and everything else that they've just really dialed this completion percentage in. He's, you know, he's already got 245 attempts. I know they played some, some overtime already and all that fun stuff, but they got he's got 245 attempts and so five games so if even if you just multiply that out to 15 games times five that's over that's 750 passes right yeah so that's an absolute ridiculous amount i think stafford's got the record with high 700s maybe yeah well anything over 600 is crazy yeah you know um so 750 attempts that's without that's only on a 15 quick math in my head i mean so call it 770 i don't know that's a ton but he's you know you got to, obviously, T.Y. Hilton is hurt and didn't play last week, but he already had 38 targets through four games, so that's 10 targets a game for him. Ebron's got 45 targets in five games, so that's nine targets a game. Ryan Grant, Chester Rogers has both got 32. That's a t- I mean that you know they're on pace for 100 targets apiece. That and and I did, and so there's Naheen Hines. So the part about Naheen Hines for me is he's like, he's got 30 catches already in five games. He's on pace for 90 catches. Right. And that's which the is magic in, number that's been floating around. That's what's been going all. around. So that's some people and like some people towards for the late rookie drafts. It there was some late into the first round draft pick that w- Naheen that, Hines. That would be the record for 
Stafford had 727 attempts. That's okay. number one overall. So basically, they, Andrew Luck is kind of on pace to shatter the record by fit by a whole game of, of big games worth of stats. Right, and I think that's probably true for more quarterbacks than not this year. I agree with that. No, I completely agree with that. But maybe, maybe not. Even, I mean, there is so many games. That you, there's 50 attempts in almost every game. I know. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, I, I would imagine that Ben Roethlisberger's attempts look close to this as well, you know, but so, but this is doesn't luck, matter. luck and his receivers. It, right. Nothing's there's nothing to change this anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And so when you were talking about, you know, obviously um, the wide receiver, Deion Kane blows his knee out in preseason. He's gone. Like, you know, the offensive line is not going to fix itself in, in any times. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously you got two offensive tackles that might come back in a couple of weeks, but it's still not, a, it's been a bad offensive line. They took a, the best offensive got guard and, you know, one, three or one, four or something. They took him in top. They they're trying, like you said, but that's not a quick fix. And the defense isn't, you know, they played over their heads the first couple of weeks. They definitely overachieved for a defense that we've seen to be, just be horrible for years now. Right. So, it's not like, like you said, they, they don't have the offensive line that Philadelphia has for this system. They don't have the defensive line that Philadelphia has to get them to ball back or take the, you know, to make it a close, to get them to lead, hold the lead. Like, it's just going to be shootout city. And you saw that against the Patriots last week. Most other teams in that position turn into the Dolphins from week four and they just get hammered. But Andrew Lux, just right. Andrew, he's got a heart of a lion for as horrible as that sounds to have to say. He really does. He's not going down without a fight. So, what I'm trying to say is Naheen Hines being on pace for 90 catches, not 90 targets, but 90 catches. I feel like you'd be, do- yes, Marlon Mack is coming back. And with that does throw a big question mark into plans and Jack Doyle's out. So that too, but I feel like maybe if you could get a first plus or something, mean, maybe, you know, a, if you get that first round pick from a team who's zero and five or something fun like that, where mm-hmm. you're like, I guarantee that I'm guaranteed that this pick is going to be early. Right. They, they might not stay. It might not be the first pick. It might not be the second pick, but it's going to be really, really up there. Then I can see getting onto that. But I really like the idea of holding Naheen Hines until this uh, this catch number continues to grow. I mean, just. Uh, maybe you don't gamble into next year and they draft a workhorse back, but I just don't, I don't know that that's, there's not a lot of big top end running backs. There's not a, a Darius Geis and there's not a Saquon Barkley uh, this buzzing the college landscape right now. So there's not necessarily somebody who's just going to blow the doors off the running back list. I mean, obviously everybody pop there's, there's guys out there. And, mm-hmm. and when you go to the, you know, by the time you get into the college football season, there'll be 20 guys that we love. And by the time the, the, uh, um, combine rolls around. There'll be some 10 guys that we're absolutely in love with. And we got a complete fun first round for draft picks. Right. I get it. But I think if you hang, hang on to Naheen Himes right now, if you hang on to him for a little bit longer, I felt like when you brought up the James White thing, you were going to go to the, he almost has to continue to go up in stock price. Yes, Marlon Mack is a question mark and that could, but I mean, Marlon Mack's not like a, he's not a workhorse type back anyway. I guess he could be potentially right. fall in, but I think Nah Naheen Hans has made a big enough name. He's not. He he. You saw well, him come in and take Wilkins' spot. He got 15 carries last week. Well, the thing is, is that it's it's not it's not about the the necess- I mean, he did get 15 carries. It was for 45 yards, so nothing great there. He's he's not a good running back. He's a good pass catcher. Sure. And I mean, there there is in lies the difference between what James White. Not that James White's not a good pass catcher, but he's they great. have. I have an offense like yes the thing with with that that could lead to Naheen Hines staying m- closer to the same of what he's doing right now is the fact that they don't have any other real great receivers like Ch- he's Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant are basically Naheen Hines like, right no yeah exactly you know, about the same size right and I and thought it are just... kind of slot players but both are right. kind of slot players and Yes. You know, so I, I can understand. I, I can I get that, and I'm not necessarily saying that. I, I just I don't know. I don't know if I want nine. If he gets ninety catches, sure. I, yeah, I think there's there could be some good value for I, I, heading he, into next season. That, I just I don't I don't I don't just I don't love the long term outlook for Naheen Hines. Well, honestly, at this of point, being a good as good a producer as maybe people are seeing him as right now. Right. Well, honestly, at this point, I thought that Ryan Grant would have been a little bit more uh, take charge ish 
And, and and for the wide receivers, not that he's been bad, but he's been basically like a five for 50 every week kind of receiver. Mm-hmm. And Chester Rogers for his eight targets that he's gotten three weeks in a row. Uh, if you, you know, the Thursday night game is the only game on. So you're watching that closer than any, you know, than in most games on Sundays the the dude dropped a bomb touchdown that was he was running he's behind the defense and he's full speed and the ball hits him and he drops it i mean that happens right to perfect marvin jones has done that this year did Deshaun sure. jackson do, will do that to you i bet you know everybody will drop a ball but then, then after that you're already on drop alert from the heen hines and mm-hmm. then after that you're in the end zone and a surefire touchdown is up in the air for neen hines and he jumps up for it and it just looks like will ferrell in that movie like i don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> and he just didn't know how to do chester you, rogers chester yes right chester rogers looked like will ferrell like i don't know what to do with my hands right now the ball's coming i'm in the end zone i should be catching it and i don't know how to do it yeah and i just lost a ton of confidence in him from that and i'm not saying i'm going to use that as a reason to boost up Naheen Hines value but like I like that comparison is just like Ryan Grant Naheen Hines and Chester Rogers are basically the same player they got the same amount of targets Naheen Hines maybe gets a little bit lower average depth of target running out of backfield and in the slot too he's got 29 out of 35 these other guys both mirror image Ryan Grant and Chester Rogers are running 24 out of 32 which isn't a terrible completion right. rate but I guess but there's no wide receiver savior coming. Obviously, Hilton was crushing, but Naheen Hines has got three games this year with nine targets already or more, and two of them, uh, one of them was with the, um, before Hilton got hurt, and I guess his last two, Hilton got hurt against the Texans and didn't play against the Patriots, so I can see the bump up in targets there. I just feel like if you hang on to the guy and let him put in some more catches yeah. that you're just going to continue to have this value go up. Yeah, I I I I can understand it a little bit more than the than the James White aspect of maybe holding for a little while longer just because there is uh more opportunity possibly. Obviously it's not as good of an offense, but it, Hey, Andrew Luck is is absolutely no slouch. Like well, you said, it's just like a volume offense right. at this point. Like I said, there's no defense to stop anybody on the other side, really. I mean, they've they've played better than they should have, but it's it's just a vol- the dudes on pace for 750 right so targets. I, so I think you know, obviously touchdowns are going to be fluky through the rest of this. And if Marlon Mack comes back and J- Jack Doyle comes back and T. Y. Hilton all get healthy and they all come back out there, I see that. I think the t- the flu- the touchdowns are going to be fluky. Uh, but when you look at the, it's the running back stuff isn't really going to help you out really ever. Like the yardage is negligible except for this last game with 45. And if Marlon's max in there, there's no way this guy's getting 15 carries. Um, so that, that four, that 4.5 right there that you got, I mean, that adds into your 16 and he, you know, he had seven for 45. So that's, I think seven for 45 and maybe 20 or 30 yards rushing is, is probably about what you're the, the seven for 45 is probably the high end of catches for him moving forward. And the 40 yards rushing is probably the high end of him moving forward to me. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Like those two touchdowns in this 28 point game makes the stat line look great. Obviously the 11 targets is awesome. Um, but if you're just catching a couple, five or six balls for 45 yards, I mean, again, it's basically Chester Rogers. Yeah. Well, I can and see. And I, I don't know. The rushing, I don't think, is going to be there, and the touchdowns will be up and down. So I just think that he'll just be kind of floating through a lot of these 16s and then go back to seven fives, and then it'll be a 16, and maybe you get a two-touchdown game thrown in there. So I just – right now, his name's kind of hot. It, it would be the reason that I would be interested in possibly moving on. Not – and again uh, – to again go off the James White thing of saying how it's a little different you did spend probably uh, you got more invested in Naheen Hines so it, it is harder to jump up that tier because you already either spent a high second or maybe a low end first on him so it is hard to be like oh well I can cash in on this right now like James White you didn't spend anything for him right in a startup draft or I mean I don't even if you I don't don't know where he got drafted in a rookie draft four years ago but oh, well yeah, if that, he did at all you know no they yeah exactly he probably didn't he, it was late and so it is harder to get the value for Hines right now than well, it would be for james white james white is 26 years old and he's got five years of being rb2 barely in your lineup james white naheen Hines is 21 year old rookie who has this, like you said, There's a lot more excitement around him right there, now. I but think. those, but that, you know, the week against the Texans, like you said, he had the nine catches for 62 and two touchdowns. That's a very similar week than that, that, that uh, James White was having in week four when he put up 30 touchdowns, 30 points for PPR points. But Neheen Hines had that 
Randy Moss esque touchdown oh, yeah, catch. Yeah, yeah. And so, like you said, I mean, he's good receiver. Now, I think there's there's no doubt in my mind right now that if you had Naheen Hines and, and James White on the same team, you trade Naheen Hines, get more for him. I mean, just he's maybe twenty one year old rookie. Somebody might love the, you know, who knows? He's maybe, just depending Patriots on what guy, yeah. maybe. Yeah, but I, I just, I just feel like Naheen Hines is is. is I just felt like he was hot this year, hot right now. Then there's that ninety catch total floating around. I think. And I was maybe a little concerned about what the long term outlook. Well, I like the guy. I think he's a good receiver, and he there is there's wow catches already in his on his repertoire or his resume. Sure, uh, moving forward, and I could be completely wrong with this. He could be he, maybe he ends up being their slot receiver and slash, you know, s- scat back. Here sure. And there, well, but. Hilton's been hurt in the past, and yeah. he's hurt already. And you know, like I. Ch- I Chester Rogers and Ryan Grant just hadn't been. I mean, they've they've been target monsters. They haven't been like hot quality monsters. Right. They've kind of they've been what they what but they should quality. be. But they need a, they need better players. They need better skill position players. And I think they're now that you're in your first year as being a head coach, you could kind of acknowledge that maybe a little bit. But the team has a lot of needs, so who knows? And they should be spending money in free agency coming up here. Agreed. All right. Uh, let's move on to Will Fuller and the emergence of Kiki QT. There you go. Are you at all concerned uh, with uh, everyone likes Kiki right now? Are you concerned with Will Fuller kind of moving forward? Because, you know, we were really excited about Will Fuller going into the season because of what he did last year, not only on the big plays, but st- seeing uh, good volume yeah, throughout his health and well, and, me, uh, what's his, and Watson's health. I I I, I got to start with Kiki first to to get to Will Fuller here because Kiki's only got two career games. His first game, Will Fuller gets hurt in the first half, and that game also goes to ha- overtime, mm-hmm. and they basically go to the very end of overtime. So Kiki QT gets 15 targets and 10 catches and 100 yards in his very first game, mm-hmm. and we've we've had so many overtimes already in this season that when it gets mixed up you don't even get to take you don't get to credit discredit the quantity of mm-hmm. points or catches or targets or attempts or touchdowns like there's been so many overtime games you just look at the fantasy points and you don't even thinking about who did what who got extra time mm-hmm. and QT was getting targeted a lot that game when Will Fuller was out Will Fuller's had trouble staying healthy in the past but then last week you saw the targets go from like 15 to what 6 or something like that. Uh, seven. Seven for QT Yeah, because he's week. got 22. To, that's what it is. I saw he's got some people are like, oh, well, he's got 22 targets over his first two games. Like, yeah, but 15 targets and seven targets are two different numbers. They're very far away from yeah, each other. Yeah, but still only three for Fuller in a full, in a full game. Right. No, I'm, I, I got to get I gotta get through QT to get to Fuller because you can't be – you can't expect – you can't look at one game and be like, oh, my God, 15 targets and then – picture Kiki QT and not be excited about it right. because it is exciting for his seat. You see a guy's first game go 10 for a hundred. That's awesome. But you can't discredit the two major factors that go along with that were overtime and, yeah, I can, I agree and Will that. Fuller goes out. So week the second week of Kiki QT's NFL career, much less targets, but then also Will Fuller's in the game, whether he's 100% healthy or not, we don't know because he went out the week before, but he's back and he's playing and only gets a couple targets. So there's two things to be worried about for Will Fuller here, his health, and yes, QT gives... Um, well, his health has been... Not the best. Right. But when he's in there, he's been one of the best receivers when, it's come, when it comes, comes to making fantasy points. Right, and, and I think that's where... If, becomes a sticky situation because you could say well he played extra time without will fuller and got the 15 targets but to but there's there's still however you want to really dice it up there's still a deduction in yes will fuller's it's, fantasy it's outlook. a quality option for the quarterback and anytime you have those it it limits other people's ceilings right and even you saw when will fuller was crushing and taking you know big plays to the house like even it it didn't limit anybody else's seal. It, it didn't limit DeAndre Hopkins, but there was nothing else to go around for anybody else. And so now you see, I mean, Hopkins crushed it last week because he's, he's, he's DeAndre Hopkins. Mm-hmm. But even Ryan Griffin's out there catching balls. He doesn't look fantastic, but he's, he's sucking up everything that gets near him. So 
I I am a little bit worried about Will Fuller. It's not all, but it's not only because of QT. But QT is a major factor because he does look good. He is getting open and he plays a different position than Will Fuller. And mm-hmm. it's just far as both, being, both will move into the, in and out of the slot some. But QT's a but little QT's bit more natural mo- at it because slot. He, QT's and a, I mean Hopkins will move into the slot I'll, sometimes too. He should. They should. They, they do. I'm, I'm I looked very, at. I don't had pro. all this, I had all the slot splits in front of me, but I closed the window and I didn't feel like. <laughs> I'm I'm very pro best wide receiver on the field move around like yeah. that when I back in I hadn't played Madden in the last couple of years but I would always have my best guy in the slot because I can go right left or straight instead of being bound by that boundary on one side right. of him you know so I, I would I, I'm big on that and I'm in but like it's just a little bit because Fuller's a little bit more rangy He's a little less slotty right. than QT. And, and you know so, that Fuller yes, can that still does. make your play and make sure. your day in one play. Absolutely. But it just becomes a lot less fun when there's not, you know, more like six or seven targets for Fuller. When it goes down to three or four, it's harder. It, it makes a whole it makes it a whole lot harder for Fuller to do what he's doing. Uh, you know, obviously there's more pieces to worry about on the field, but to get the looks of just taking that hey, and the, and a big thing right now is, hey, are we gonna continue to let Deshaun Watson take all these shots because our offensive line isn't any good and it's a Deshaun lot of Watson? or yeah oh, we're yeah, going to yeah, continue yeah, yeah. to let Deshaun Watson take all these shots i.e. longer developing plays and him having to, to move Will around Fuller. to get Will Fuller when Kiki Cutie could be sucking up that single coverage on a linebacker and eating up a, a quick target from Deshaun so every game he's not Get, picking himself off the turf, getting checked out with a damn stethoscope yeah. on the sideline. <laughs> I, saw, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's definitely, that's a lot. They're trying to check out those lungs when you're, when right. you get the stethoscope. Well, he had a rib injury and now they think he might've re-injured their injury. Um, Deshaun's going to do what Deshaun does. You, you can't limit him too, too much in the mobile. Uh, I will disagree with some people saying like, you got to, li- you do have to limit his shots and he needs to be a little smarter, but that's what makes Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson. And as soon as you take that away from him, You've eliminated, and if you want to take it away from him, give him a better offensive line. Y'all idiots let Dwayne Brown roll out last yeah. season and wouldn't pay him. No like, doubt. I mean, I, I have a little bit of a problem with your franchise quarterback inside the five over and over and over trying to line up with safeties and linebackers. Like you're good. Uh, like Bill O'Brien's supposed to be a good offensive mind. If you can't draw up plays to at least keep that your your franchise quarterback from getting shot. At, I mean, once or twice is okay, but yeah. like repeatedly. And and pl- and after you see after you drag him off the turf a couple times and check him with the t- stethoscope, don't right. call it again. Right. Give him a week. Right. You know, like don't call it again. So just some quick numbers, uh, we'll, and we'll talk about QD, QT, and uh, Will Fuller's uh, prices and maybe what you would sell him or buy him for. On the target percentage with two games, uh, with QD in there for two games, obviously he played in the overtime and played. Uh, didn't didn't play and then QT played in the overtime. Uh, he sucked Fuller's target percentage from sixteen one or from twenty two two to sixteen one. And when you look at the team target percentage, Nukes had a twenty four percent target percent. Kiki's at a twenty two point seven target percent, and Fuller's dropped down to the sixteen point one target percentage. And then when you just give it the raw numbers, it's seven targets last week um, for QT, three for Fuller, fifteen for QT. Obviously, Fuller not playing the whole game and the overtime, and then five for Fuller. Yeah. Um, so it's just it is a it is a little worrisome. I know you missed those games, but QT still went in there and then got those targets. Um, and Will Fuller isn't a stranger to missing games. Now QT hasn't been started his career off healthy. And now, you know, all three of those dudes are limited this week right. already to start practice. He, QT's already, I think he was missing games for a hamstring to start the season. I guess, would you, are you in, are you exploring any options to sell Will Fuller? Should you be exploring any options to sell Will Fuller? Or do you think it's like people realizing that maybe you're panicking because QT came back and they're not going to give you as much as Will Fuller's worth, even though Will Fuller's been solid every time he's been in the game so far. And I mean, a touchdown has saved you on one of those days for the most part. Yeah. I mean, Um, I think, uh, I think trying, trying with Fuller first, I guess. I think trying to sell Will Fuller after a two for fifteen game is foolish. Right. I mean, obviously, you might have the guy. The, the if there's a you know, you, there's a one guy in almost every league that loves somebody more than everybody else. And if there's a Will Fuller guy that just thinks he's getting one over on you to even just be able to get him from you, 
then I, can, I if you can sell him for what you were getting from him when he had a touchdown three straight weeks to start the season, mm-hmm. then I don't mind selling Will Fuller for – I mean, we, we were talking about him as a six-round startup pick in the offseason, you know, just trying to find better guy Like Will Fuller and his obvious connection with Watson was like he taking that – DJ. obviously D- Deshaun Jackson is – the way he and he started the season with Fitzmagic mm-hmm. doesn't make this argument for me right now. But Will Fuller's connection with Watson was taking Will Fuller from that D Jax boom bus receiver to boom and almost boom. You know what I mean? Boom like it, and boom and safe. Boom and yes, exactly. He moved out of boom and bust to boom, and if it's not a boom, it's still a touchdown, and you're all right instead of one. Right. You know that is so. I don't think I would be trying to sell Will Fuller off a two and one, two catches sure. for 15 yards. That's foolish. Obviously, he has an injury. He's QT. If if Kiki comes in and establishes him, his himself, like there's still no chance that Will Fuller doesn't have a big game in the near future. Mm-hmm. And it might take two more weeks to get there. But Will Fuller's got a he's got a five for 102 touchdown game coming mm-hmm. up. Like it, yeah, you know. So just if you want to sell him and Kiki. Kiki scares you. Scared of Kiki. If Kiki scares you enough to want to sell Fuller, then I don't mind you selling Fuller, but definitely not in the next seven days. You know what I mean? I agree a hundred percent with with all that. So I I won't really go repeating any of that. I'm I'm not necessarily in camp really too nervous about Fuller. He still has the speed that the way I've always equated it to is if everyone in the stadium knows that you're getting the ball and you're going to run that fly. And they still can't cover you. I mean, I want that guy. Yeah, he's and he, too fast. Right, and and that's how it was at Notre Dame when he was out there. Now the hands had been in question a little bit because he would, but he had seemingly kind of maybe gotten over that a little bit. And now it was like that in the pros. Now, like even in like you, say, oh well, he's going to the pros. Maybe they can, but no, they still couldn't. So yeah. I'm not necessarily worried about that down and i think the texans will eventually turn into one of those offenses that does average closer to the 30 points a game because you do have nuke you do have kiki you do have deshaun watson most importantly if you could get a little bit of a running game in an offensive line i think this team could easily be averaging one of the hot most highest octane uh teams in the league so there's i don't not bailing out on nuke by any means but if you do or fuller by any means but if you did want to you you gotta wait till he has another big game moving on to kiki would you ring the register right now if somebody wanted to give you a first for him or well if somebody want to give me the first for him yes i would and i'll tell you that because earlier this year i sold after the after the preseason game the john ross had a big play had that nasty catch and juke guys and got into the end zone sold him for a two for a second rounder and it's just like, well, you know, what'd you do that for? Well, because there's a million receivers and I want that two to go around my other two. And then I sold Keelan Cole for a two right after mm-hmm. Marquise Lee got hurt. And sure, after that first big game of Keelan Cole, seven for a hundred and touch or something, maybe if it gets the Patriots, it's like, oh, well, maybe, you know, I, I, I would rather have Keelan Cole in a two there. But then the next week, Dante Moncrief gets 15 targets. And it's just the, all that up and downness. Mm-hmm. I got now I got three second round picks for next year on this one team. And those three twos are nice bullets in the gun. And I can move around. And obviously, this is a short bench league. Mm-hmm. Like some of these questions we'll get to. And some things that if, it's like if you got a 14 man league and it's 25 roster spots, like you're not just selling people for fun. Right. Because you need people. But this is a this is FFPC. This is a five hundred dollar league, and it's twenty bench spot, twenty spots, including kicker and, and a quarterback at all times. Mm-hmm. So you really only have seventeen players, right? And so I was churning, and I'm I kind of stay in that short bench mind frame a lot because that's where sure. I, I have a lot of money invested in these leagues. But I would sell Kiki for you for a two. I said for one. I, all right, for a one. I, I was I, I was already backing off of that as it was coming would out you of sell my mouth. For a two? No, I don't think I would no, sell no, him no. for a two. I, I two would, twos? No, maybe two twos. But his. I think I'll just hang on for two twos. I, I can't blame you. I I I've I, I, that's why because I, I do believe. Like again, I think this offense is is gonna could be one of those offenses that scores a lot of points, 
in the future or near, even like you've just seen growth through the first couple of weeks of sure. Deshaun getting on track. Yes. And him. I mean, I just think you've seen this offense kind of steadily growing a little bit. They stalled out a little bit against uh, the Cowboys this past week. Yeah. Well, but, I was I got I got confused with that second rounder because I told the story about my other two, two my other twos that I sold. But yes, I would I could I could sell Kiki for a first. But as I said that, I was backing off of the two. I couldn't sell him for a two. And for and the reason is because what you just said. The Texans defense, even though J.J. Watt and Clowney looks good, they've everybody's scoring the most points against. They got the Tex- a lot of injuries on the back end of They're, that thing. The Texans defense is not helping out the Texans offense at all. The Texans offensive line is not exact. They don't have a running game, and and Deshaun Watson looks great. Obviously, was beat, uh, got the hell beat out of him last week, but he's he looks from fantastic. that first game against the Patriots to the last couple of games, it's been night and day from what he looked confused. And didn't know what was going on in that first. Like, Deshaun Watson did not look good in that first game of the season. Now, the Patriots can do that for you when you have a lot of time to prepare that against tennis. Him. Oh, that was, okay, week one, yeah, against the Patriots. Um, but I think he's been night and day since that to, you know, the Giants game and now the Cowboys game. Like, even though it wasn't a great ending score, um, the Giants, or the Cowboys got a good defense. Like the, pa- the, Cow- the Cowboys have a really high – They've for – out of nowhere, almost it seems like they can get pressure on the defense, mm-hmm. on the quarterback, and so. they did that, and they beat up Deshaun. But yes, there, there's a lot of reasons to like Kiki, and and Will Fuller's health issues moving forward is so you know you have to take each player individually here. Like we, you know, you want the best for Will Fuller, but as a Kiki owner, if Will Fuller's banged up and he can go out there and score some more points. I wouldn't sell him for a two. I'm glad yeah. you caught me on that. I, I could sell him. I'd ring the register for a one because now I take that one, added it with another right. one, and I'm going to get my – I'm trying to find it's a way to – It's all about the move up. It's all about – I'm trying to take my one and I'm trying to sell somebody for a one and – Taking work. my one and my Will Fuller and getting – Yeah, exactly. Somebody I'm, awesome. I'm trying to go – I'm trying to figure out how trying to, to move from a six-round startup pick to a third-round startup pick. Trying to figure Second out – Second-round startup yes. pick. Trying to move up in asset class. Right. All right. Well, I mean, I again, I think I would I think I would pay two twos for Kiki, maybe spending them, huh? Maybe, I don't know. We'll revisit this in a couple of weeks. Obviously, this is fresh and new. Kiki hasn't played a ton, and I think this we'll, we haven't seen the best of this Texans offense yet. Uh, so maybe in a couple of weeks we'll revisit. Uh, but I w- I wouldn't give up a first round pick for Kiki. I would not either. Okay, good. I wanted to say that just because the. You know, our pleasure chester's here. Kiki's hot and fresh. And if you're wanting to buy into hot and fresh. The two twos makes me uneasy. That's still a lot. I wouldn't give two twos for him. But just because there's, you still got Hopkins who's going to get his 25% target share no matter what. Right. And not that Ryan Griffin is even a thing, but he's catching some passes. And there's some and tight ends. And when Will Fuller is healthy. They drafted some tight ends that maybe. Yes. Could, there, yeah. So there's. And two I, and a three. Two, that three, that three might put it over the top. The two and a three makes Just me feel much better. Don't get too crazy going out. And, uh, Kiki's hot. You, you know, it's yeah. hard. To, you don't want to buy the hottest of the hottest. Let's squeeze one more in here before we go to the after show. All right. We'll, we'll go uh, with uh, Trenton here. What's up with Alex Collins? Uh, should owners be worried that Baltimore has zero draft capital invested in him? I, I know as an AC owner, I feel as though I've missed my chance to sell high will be stuck holding the bag on an RB that's slowly losing a job he earned last year. Uh, you could you could start with this one. I mean, well, at this point in the season, there's no doubt that you feel, and justifiably so, you feel like you've seen a lose a loss of value. I mean, uh, you know, Trenton before the season started, Alex Collins was one of everybody's favorite running backs to pick, and that was a that was everybody you know a lot of people's first running back that they wanted to get if they went zero RB, quote unquote. And Alex Collins was getting traded and traded for first round picks all day long. And there's no doubt about it. He's lost some value right this second. That's just the name of the game. If what have you done for me lately? And lately, Alex Collins has been fumbling and Buck Allen looks pretty good. It, and that air show is back, you know, with John Brown's doing well. It's just not the beat up offense that it was at the end of the year where the, all they had was Alex Collins. Now they have more options, which traditionally helps out a running back mm-hmm. to have more options. But that volume he was getting at the end of the year was very substantial and he was looking good. And he was it. starting to get the catches, which yes, was really turning the tide down on to, down to, everything that he was doing down the stretch there. But right now, as we stand going into week six here, there's no doubt you left some left. You lost some value. 
Um, I don't see how you're going to get much value out of Alex Collins right now, so I would hold him to see him go yeah. back up. It's kind of like a Freeman thing a little bit here. Well, he's not coming from anywhere of the stature. Right, but, I mean, he was at the end of last year being – put up on a little bit more of a pedestal there i mean like if you didn't if you didn't like you have him right now if you didn't draft him this year you paid nothing for him good call um so maybe or if you didn't, obviously if you not didn't as, trade for him over the salt over the summer right, you could have right. traded for him and paid a lot not as high profile of Devonte freeman not going in the third rounds but i mean fifth sixth round was some alex collins sure and startup so i mean not super far away from um i, I mean for me, when I watch Alex Collins play football, I like everything that I see, I, and he can catch the football. Other than the fumbling that takes him right, him on and, the that, bench. and that 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 really, uh, just when I was, I don't have the game log in front of me right now, uh, but he was having some decent games with not a whole lot of touches because he is really good with the ball in his hands and he's very hard to bring down. Yeah, um, and then to finally see him get back to that goal line opportunity where Buck Allen was making a living off of recently. And at the end of last year, he was way out snapping him in the goal line area to get that opportunity back. And then to fumble, it was just a dagger yeah. at that particular Hate junction in the season right now. Yeah. Uh, terrible for your Alex Collins stock, but to get back to him as a player, like I think this guy is an amazing, not maybe not amazing football player, but a really good football player. When you look at all the PFF metrics um, and the forced miss tackles yeah. and cr- yards created and stuff like that, he's one of the guys that's higher up on the list when you sort by X amount of attempts because he didn't have as many as attempts as some of those higher end guys because he didn't come on until later coming from last season. And then even into this season, like forced miss tackles um, was something that he he's been high up in and you can it's evident on the field he's really hard to bring down he's elusive and shifty and then when you do get a hold of him like he's not going down with a with a garbage arm tackle like, oh no way he's he's, he's not going down he's easy. really hard to wrangle and I do think there are some hands there so he is basically on a one year deal with them he'll be a restricted free agent next year they can do with what they want with him kind of going on into the season he's basically theirs if they want him uh moving on to next season so i mean it could be just like last year where by the end of the season he's resumed uh being awesome he hasn't really been that bad fantasy points wise uh, for the entire season maybe not quite as what you drafted him for you thought maybe that he would yeah, there was a assume, couple of twelve point games. But there. then you know, once that Kenneth Dixon came or was still hanging around, and they're starting to love him a little more, you had to start feeling a little worse about your Alex Collins there. And for whatever reason, they don't feel the need to give one guy the work over there in Baltimore. Right. Well, and that's you. You you said a lot of good things right there. And one of the things that I liked about Alex Collins was a couple of games ago he was catching some balls in space and just looking nasty after the catch. And there's no doubt about it that, you know, he's his um, the efficiency metrics. You can see that stuff on the field. Right. But the quantity wasn't there. The touches weren't there. And when you got those fumbles on top of fumbles like that, and especially like especially last week when it's a close game, mm-hmm. a division rivalry. Right. And they could have won. And he fumbled at the goal line. It was a field goal slugfest. And it, that's just one of those games where it's it just sucks to see that when right. uh, that's your guy you know if if when yeah. you know you love to see that if you don't have alex collins on your team and it's the other guy's guy but when it's your right. guy that's that's so just a bummer last week he got the receiving touchdown that that helped you out and then week one he got the rushing touchdown that really bailed you out week uh three he gets the rushing touchdown with 18 for 68 and then week uh two he bailed you out with three for 55 so i mean he had 8.9 12 16.4 11.5 and then in this field goal slugfest where he fumbled on the goal line he had 7.6 but got 12 carries if you could keep him around the the 12 to 15 threshold and and you could see those three catches yeah happen it, he's obviously he's not your workhorse guy but i mean there's i don't think there's you're not like he's not absolutely the the worst player in the world he's still rb 25 right now i mean i know that's nothing great that's not what you wanted and that's not what the expectations were but if you think about how bad it's been to still be one pick one player outside of that bottom rb2 range it's not horrible is he's not your rb1 right now and that's terrible 
Um, so but I can yes, see uh, any side of the fence here, whether you want to sell or buy. I, I, I was kind of interested in buying Alex Collins recently. Um, so I, I would, I think it's much like the Devonte Freeman thing. You can't sell right now. You have to wait until this guy either regains a hold of and being buzzed about yeah right now he's kind of shat on so you you don't want to sell those kind of guys right now yeah he's standing in a pile of poo poo right now there's no doubt about it so trenton you i would say hang on to alex collins if you can if for some reason you want to you know send out a message to if you send if if you send out a message and say hey alex collins is on trade block you might as well just drop his ass (laughs) you know what i mean like so you don't send out a group message like that you basically send out a trade to everybody in the league and basically you send out maybe alex collins and a two for everybody's first rounder and see what happens and then if the one per if there's one person is highly interested they'll send you a decent trade offer back and now you're negotiating um you know I don't, that's really about the only way to play it you just got to hang on to them and but the, things can change so quickly right especially with running backs and you saw it at the end of last year either with either alex collins could get hurt and this is a moot point or buck allen could get hurt and then all of a sudden they're leaning on alex collins and mm-hmm. it's a whole nother story and all it takes like casey said about somebody else or all it all it takes is two or three weeks of Alex Collins doing what he was doing last year, and he's right back up there. Right. And it's just sometimes it feels like a couple of weeks can feel like an eternity in fantasy For football. Sure. You know? That's two, a good point. Two or three weeks of being down it can feel so terrible. And right, like right now, if you're talking about potentially maybe buying Alex Collins, he just fumbled this week, so maybe the, he's in the doghouse this coming week, and this is a really good opportunity to see him – on the buy low sector mm-hmm. next week. If, it's, yeah. if he's not already in the buy low, which he is, he's, I just, we don't really believe in selling low until we, you know, there might be some cases where you got to sell low because low is going to go lower. Mm-hmm. And Alex Collins really can't go too much lower. Mm-hmm. Obviously, from expectations, it's felt like a free fall. Right. And it sucks. Yeah. But you're already down here now. So what, you know, yes, you, it's, you know, Basically, Trenton goes, I feel as though I've missed my chance to sell high. You have. You have, Sorry. but I think I think there's a good opportunity for it to come back around. He's he's still moderately young. I don't think he's super old. He's, he's 24, just turned 24. Yeah. And there's a chance that he could end up going somewhere else or they, they, put, they sign the tender for him and he comes back. Um, well, you see flashes in the pans out mm-hmm. of running backs that are undrafted and stuff like that. But, I mean, the way Alex Collins played last year and the way he even looks this year when he does get the ball, he's obviously an NFL back. Mm-hmm. He's not going to wash out. He, you know, he's he's going to be there. Maybe he is just an RB, too. Maybe he, maybe he is never going to be that the guy that is, you know, super, super productive. Maybe he will just be an RB, too. And maybe you should sell him for two twos. I, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't – I wouldn't mind taking two twos for him if I had him right now. I don't think anybody's giving that to you at this moment. You no. just need a couple of rebounds. Well, Trenton, for fun, just for fun, tell us what happens. Send everybody in your league, Alex Collins and a two, for their first rounder and see what happens and, and, and hit us up about it. I might even start with a three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I see your other uh, remark down here, Trenton, about Tyler Lockett. We're going to take that over to the after show. That's called a tease. And then your other statement of the quarterly analysis of rookie wide receivers and how their values uh, have either followed your path of expect or uh, as you expected or uh, have gone in an unexpected direction. That's a great idea. And, uh, you know, we look into doing something that down, down the road, but I think this will end the, uh, the pleasure chest. Uh, be sure to go. We'll answer the rest of the questions on the after show and uh, appreciate you joining us. Yep.